Well, uh, good morning everyone. I can see that um, lots of people have joined me online. Uh, I greet you all in the name of God. Uh, a few things before I start. Um, I hope that you are continuing to look after yourselves and that you and your families are, are staying safe and that you are well. Continue to follow us on Facebook. I have been coming to you on Facebook uh, every Tuesday, every Thursday for the Holy Communion, Midweek Communion, and for Sundays for our main services. So today is going to be our normal Holy Communion service. You, you don't need anything. Just um, stay, watch, pray, and join in with the singing if, if you know the words. But just be silent, relax, and, and enjoy the service, really. <laughs> Again, you know, this is, although the situation is not so good, God has sort of uh, placed us in a position where we have a time on our hands where we are reminded to look after ourselves and our families and our friends. We have been made to stop and think and reflect uh, about everything that is going on around us. We, you know, if, if it wasn't for this issue that, that is going on, there was no way that humanity will be put on hold like what we have now. So, you know, it is a great moment in history. I have been praying most of the time during, during the night. I was awake up to 2, 2 a.m. And I pray through the night up to 3 a.m. And, you know, God is going to take away this, this terrible disease. I can guarantee you that. This will pass away, like every other thing which has happened in history. This too will pass away. So I want to encourage you, uh, rediscover yourself, meditate on the word of God, pray, and, and look after your loved ones as we get through this, this uh, a challenge, as we get through this crisis. So welcome to our Sunday morning service a Holy Communion. I will lead you through the service. We will pray together. We will listen to some music, some hymns, and later on we will have Holy Communion and I'll be speaking to you on, on the Gospel. So a moment of silence as we begin our service.
Normally, before we begin our service, we will have a hymn to sing. So I'm going to play for you a song, a Christian hymn that you can listen and and just uh, let let it saturate you this morning as I play this hymn. So we listen to the hymn Hallelujah. <laughs> Sisters, we meet in the name of God, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbors as yourselves. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the prophets and the law. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. God will not despise. Let us come before the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgression in penitence and faith. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who forgive all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, who by your death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, Grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to now have our Bible readings. Our first Bible reading is from Ezekiel. It's from Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Ezekiel chapter 14, pardon me, Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me all round them. There, there were very many lying in the valley. They were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can you see these bones? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these dry bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
Thus says the Lord to those bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews in you, and you will and it will cause you your flesh to be risen and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, commanded and as I, have pro as I prophesied suddenly there was a noise, a rattling noise. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to, to the breath, prophesy, mortal, I say to you, prophesy. Thus says the Lord, Come from four wings, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude of them. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, That says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your grave. O oh, my people, I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your grave and bring you up from your graves. O oh, people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will act says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading today is from the Gospel of John. From the Gospel of John, chapter 11. From verses 1 to 45. It is quite a long read, but let's make our way through it. Now a certain man was ill was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and his sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said this, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister Mary and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus said to them, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, 
because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us go also, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been dead and be put in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away from many of the away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you what you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here. He is calling you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling Martha and Mary, saw Mary got up quickly and go out. They followed her because they brought they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in his spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said this, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said to them, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to him, to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? 
So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you have sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud, loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his head, his feet bound with, with stripes of cloth, and his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen that Jesus did this, believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, the raising of Lazarus is found only in the Gospel of John. We find it in John chapter 11 and 12. Before Jesus' final week, as he head towards Jerusalem, the Gospel of John is structured by seven miracles. The first one is Jesus turning water into wine. The second is the healing of the noble's man's son. The third is restoring the impotent man. The fourth is multiplying the loaves of bread, of bread and fishes. The fifth is walking on the sea. Number six is giving sight to the blind man. The seventh and the last one is the raising of the dead, which is, the la which is Lazarus, uh, the one we have in our reading today. Now, all seven signs applies to you and I. As the natural man, we were dead in trespass and sin. Jesus was at Bethabara, about 20 miles from Bethany. One day, a messenger arrived to Jesus with the sad news that Lazarus was sick. If the man had traveled quickly without any delay, he could have made the trip in one day. Jesus sent him back with the encouraging words we found in John 11, chapter 4. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. When the messenger arrived back home, Lazarus was already dead. What would his message convey to the grieving sisters now that their brother was no more and already dead? Jesus was urging them to believe his word no matter how discouraging the circumstances might have appeared. Then Jesus waited two more days before he left for Bethany. By the time he, his disciples arrive, he and his disciples arrive in Bethany. Lazarus has been dead for four days. This means that Lazarus died the very day that the messenger brought the message to Jesus. No doubt the disciples were perplexed about several matters. First of all, if Jesus loved Lazarus so much, why did he permit him to get sick? Even more, why did he delay going to heal him? Jesus tells us that 
This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. This sickness is not unto death. Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus, saw death. But Jesus was saying to them, this sickness is not unto death. The sisters were moved by what they saw. But Jesus told them that the sickness is not unto death. Because in death there is life. In death there is life. Now, if you put an apple seed on the ground and you plant it, in order for that apple seed to grow and become an apple tree, that seed that you plant on the ground has to go through the process of dying. In fact, it has to be rotten. That seed that you put on the ground gets rotten. It will rot. And through that rottenness, life will begin to show. The apple tree will begin to come out. The apple tree that will grow and yield apple fruit will begin to sprinkle out of that rotten seed. So brothers and sisters, hear the sisters of Lazarus saw that Lazarus was dead beyond measure. In fact, he has been buried for four days. There was no way that Lazarus was coming back to life. In fact, it was a hopeless situation. Just like this coronavirus look hopeless. Just like many people have been sick. Just like many people have been dying up and down the country and across the globe. The, the sister of Lazarus, Mary and Martha, saw that there was no hope. But when Jesus showed up, there was hope. When Jesus showed up, there was life. When Jesus showed up, he spoke to the problem. And out of the speaking, Lazarus came forth. In fact, we are told, that Jesus cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out, come forth. And we are told that the dead man came out from the grave, strapped with grave clothes. So brothers and sisters, as the situation of the coronavirus look hopeless, as it look like it's not going to go away, I, can, I am here to give you a promise today. That Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he is able to raise Lazarus from the dead, and that Lazarus will come back to life, if Ezekiel was told to prophesy to dry bones, and those dry bones became alive, those dry bones became human beings, then I can guarantee you, I promise you that God, will turn away this burden upon humanity. God will remove this burden upon humanity. This terrible disease called coronavirus, I decree that God will take it away. Because in spite of all circumstances, in spite that Lazarus was dead and buried for four days, when Jesus came on the scene, the dead man who has been buried for four days came back to life. Dry bones who laid in the valley. Ezekiel prophesied to those dry bones and they became life. So brothers and sisters, we are not able to comment on coronavirus. All we have to do is to decree and declare that you foul spirit and you coronavirus you are not part of humanity. In fact, you are here illegally. So we command you to disappear by the blood of Jesus. And I call you to uh, commitment. I call you to prayer. I call you to speak as Jesus spoke to Lazarus. 
and Lazarus was able to come back to life, Jesus promised us that if we believe in him, we can do greater things than he did. So brothers and sisters, I want to call your attention to start to go on your knees, to start praying to God. And say to God that he has promised in his scripture that he will, he will take away sickness from among us. He will not allow any terrible disease to come upon us. He will not allow any terrible disease to come upon our dwelling. He will not allow any terrible disease to come upon our family. He will not allow any terrible disease to come upon our friends. I want you to start decreeing by going on your knees. To start praying day and night. Whenever you can remember, I want you to bring that prayer to God. Because Jesus spoke and Lazarus came forth to life. Ezekiel prophesied and dry bones came back to life. So I want you to speak to this virus. This virus is not of humanity. It is demonic. It is not of, of God. I want you to go on your knees every day. Begin to pray to God. Remind God that he has promised in his word that he will remove away sickness from among us. He will remove away illnesses from among us and he will not inflict us with any diseases. He will not allow any disease to come near our houses. He will not allow any disease to come upon our family. He will not allow any disease to come upon our life and remind God of that promise and God who wrote, who, who called Lazarus back to life will listen to our prayer and he will bring an end to this disease. This disease will go away. They will find a cure for this disease. They will find a vaccine for this disease. They will find medication for this disease. Whoever is down with this disease, I prophesy that they come back to life. I prophesy that they receive strength. I prophesy that they receive healing. I prophesy that the spirit of God come upon them. This disease is not unto death, but it is for the glory of God. So this morning, brothers and sisters, I pray that God will be with you. I pray that the God who rose Lazarus from dead, that the God who allowed Ezekiel to prophesy, the spirit of God that came upon Ezekiel to ask him to prophesy to those dry bones to come back to life. That spirit is upon you because we are told that the spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the, to, to the world, to bring healing to the nations, to bring healing to the sick, to open the eyes of the blind, to set the captive free. Brothers and sisters, I want to bring to your attention that Jesus spoke to Lazarus, a dead man. <laughs> Lazarus was dead, yet Jesus spoke to him. There were dry bones lying in the valley. The Spirit of God came upon Ezekiel. He prophesied to those bones. I want to bring to your attention that the words we speak, they are spiritual containers. When this disease is lurking around, we are now told that it is airborne. It will never come near you. None of this disease will come near your house. None of this disease will come near your family. It will never come near your dwelling. I prophesy unto you this day that you will never be sick. Sickness will not come near you. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. I sanctify you with the blood of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will cover your house. The blood of Jesus will cover your going out and your coming in. The blood of Jesus will cover your children. The blood of Jesus will cover your friends and families. The blood of Jesus will speak for you. The blood of Jesus will hover around your house. In fact, you are in a bubble because the blood of Jesus will speak for you. Whether you like it or not, you are made in the image of God. So you are the apple of the eye. And when the enemy touches you, he touches God. So God will deal with them. Any demonic issue that is worrying you, any foul spirit, any, any principality that is bringing sickness among the nations, any principality that is bringing sickness among the UK, that is tormenting the people of UK, I command it to disappear by the blood of Jesus. As Jesus commanded Lazarus to come forth, I pray that this sickness and disease will go away. Brothers and sisters, Ezekiel prophesied to dry bones. 
Jesus spoke to, to Lazarus. He came back to life. I want you to look at this disease. Go down on your knees and start praying. Start speaking to those diseases. Start speaking to the virus that is going around. Start speaking to any symptoms if you are feeling any. And that disease will run away from you. They will run as far as their leg can carry them. Because you are a child of God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I decree that God's Spirit will continue to remain on you. And as Lazarus was risen from the dead, Jesus will help you get through this situation. If there is any situation in your life that seems dead, that seems rotten, that seems like a dry bones. I want to prophesy to you that those situations are coming back to life by the power of the Holy Ghost and by the reason of the anointing. Every situation that looks rotten, every situation in your life that looks dead, everything that looks hopeless, I speak to those situations as a man of God giving authority from heaven. I speak to those situations by the reason of the anointing and by the reason of the Holy Ghost, I speak to every dead circumstances in your life that they should come back to life. They should come back to life. They should come back to life in the mighty name of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, you are blessed. Lazarus came back to life. Dry bones came back to life. So every situation in your life, any form of infection, any form of symptoms, any form of sickness, I command them to disappear from your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that represents a dead circumstances in your life, that is moved away today by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. And in Jesus' name, we have heard God's prayer. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, we respond to the sermon, we respond to the talk by saying the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, and he ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge the baptism for the forgiveness of sins and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, please close your eyes as we pray together. Let us bring to the Father our prayers of intercession through Jesus Christ who gave himself for the world for those in government who have responsibility for making decisions at this time of global crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for those in hospitals. We pray for consultants. We pray for doctors. We pray for GP surgeries. We pray for nurses and we pray for all volunteers. We pray as they have responsibility for the lives of us, for our lives and for others, as they administer medication to those who are frail and those who are sick. May your mighty power rest upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are overwhelmed by the darkness of serious sickness. 
We pray for those who are, fear, who are in fear that life itself is fading away. We pray that you comfort their heart and give them hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for those who are struggling with loneliness and isolation. We pray for those who need support and encouragement, that you will strengthen them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for those who are weighed down by the fear and sorrow, who, who feel that God is far from them. Almighty God, we pray that they will be reminded that you are closer to them than they can ever think. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross. We pray for those who are tempted to give up following you. We pray to those, we pray for those who, whose faith are challenged in this phase of of challenge and adversity and of crisis, that you will strengthen their faith and start walking with them. Pour your spirit on them afresh and show yourself afresh to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you and we pray for all those who have died in the faith of Christ. May we find mercy in the day of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, God, we bring all our prayer together and we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Remember, it's an elbow, elbow shake. Yeah, elbow, elbow. No, no handshake. <laughs> I'm going to play for us a hymn as I prepare the element for the Holy Communion. Playing from Kingsley's iPad.
The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks and praise because he was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone but for him who died for us and rose again. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, we give you thanks and praise for every gift comes from heaven and to the darkness. Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and with words of hope, he touched the untouchable with love and washed the guilty clean. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed with his friends, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in highest. Jesus bless you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks and broke it and said, This is my body which is given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine, he took the cup and gave it and said, This is my blood which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and with this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and for all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your Holy Spirit upon us now that these gifts may be for us the body and the blood of your dear Son. That by this gift we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcome at your feast in heaven, where all creation worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's body until he comes again. Brothers and sisters, Holy Communion is ready. I am going to take communion on behalf of all my parishioners. And I will continue to take Holy Communion on behalf of all the people of Eastwood. 
I would then take communion for all the people of South End. I would take communion today for on behalf of all the people of the county of Essex. And I would take communion on behalf of the country, of this whole nation, United Kingdom. And as I eat the blood, the bread of Jesus, the, the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, I use myself as a point of contact to every soul on this nation that this disease and this terrible illness and virus would disappear and go away by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Again, I'll play for us a hymn as we listen together. Normally, you will come forward to the communion rail and receive communion. So if you sort of imagine that and have that image in your head, I'll play for us a hymn. We'll listen together and reflect together.
So brothers and sisters, we say together the prayer after communion. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still afar off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you are set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, before the final hymn, I want to give you some notices. Um, I want to thank my colleague, uh, the Reverend Mark James, who is a member of our clergy team at St. Lawrence and All Saints. He has been coming to you uh, with some morning prayers and some evening prayers. And so look out for those on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, I will be coming to you on Tuesdays and Thursday for Tuesday. It will be a message of encouragement, but on Thursdays, it will be our midweek Holy Communion. And on Sunday, we will have our main services as we have had today. Now, look out for our news sheet. I will be putting them on Facebook and on one of the sheet, it has a little message from me and a prayer that you can use and a Bible, a Bible verse that you can use to pray as we get through this together. And so uh, I want to send my love uh, and greetings to all my parishioners. Uh, it, it's, it's not nice that we are not able to meet, but by the grace of God and through uh, uh, media, we are able to meet online. So I want to send my greetings and love to all of you. Uh, I want you to keep looking after yourself and keep you and your families safe. Now, for those of you who are watching and are not members of my church, hey, you are welcome. You are part of this family. Look on our Facebook page. You will find my contact. Give me a ring and let's have a chat. And let's help you get through this uh, crisis. Let's help you get through this situation together. Uh, uh, get in touch with me and let's talk together, let's pray together and let me strengthen you uh, along the journey. You are welcome uh, to become part of our family. In fact, you are part of our family, whether you like it or, or not. If you live in Eastwood, you are my parishioner and I have a duty of care for you. So when this whole thing is over, you will be seeing me in and around the community uh, knocking about, praying for people and chatting to people. So God bless you all and keep looking out for the videos uh, on Monday uh, for morning or evening prayer, Tuesdays for my message of encouragement, uh, Wednesdays for morning and evening prayer, on Thursdays for our midweek communion, and on Friday for morning and evening prayer, whichever whichever one you are able to join in, it will be great as we, as we pray together and as we wait together for God to, to lift this burden uh, up from us. And so, brothers and sisters, the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, who is the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Let us listen to our final hymn as we depart together.
Brothers and sisters, may you stay safe, God bless you, and stay healthy. Goodbye.